Hey guys, my name is Dylan and this channel is all about filmmaking and editing. So if you are new to the channel, make sure to check out my other videos after this and consider subscribing. In the last color grading tutorial, we created a really cool look. We created Zack Snyder's Justice League look, which was a very desaturated teal and green. And today we're gonna be learning how to create a really nice looking teal and orange, which is a color scheme that gets a lot of from people and that's because it's widely overused. But there's a reason it's overused and that's because you have orange, which generally our skin lies under and the contrasting color of orange, which is teal. If you're wondering why matching those up matters, that's because they are complementary colors and complementary colors are basically two colors on the color wheel that contrast each other the most. So the orange in the teal and orange color scheme helps to keep people's skin tones on track and allow for that color separation from the teal. So when they are matched up in a shot to Together, they allow for high contrast and images that really pop. Okay, so this is a shot from ArtGrid and it was shot in log as you can see, which is really cool because you can use stock footage on the site that's in log, which is really handy, especially because I happen to have my hard drive break on me and I'm still in lockdown here in Saigon, Vietnam. We actually can't even go out past 6 p.m. That's how strict it is. So I am very limited on <laughs> what shots I have. So Art Grid has been a savior. So we're gonna be using Color Finale Pro today. And before we start, I wanna mention that if you don't have Color Finale Pro, if you just have Final Cut Pro, you will not be able to create the orange and teal look as professional as you can with this plugin. And that's because if you start to push your colors too much, if you use, say, your HSL masks and start to push your colors, your colors will start breaking. There's no option to blur or smooth over your colors to smooth over the pixels. However, in Color Finale Pro, you can. So I highly suggest picking up this plugin. It is 110% worth it. So this is shot in a log profile. And if you shoot in log, you'll need to convert your footage to a Rec. 709 color space. All that means is you add more contrast and saturation back into your image. You can use what is called an input LUT or a normalization LUT, or you can manually add contrast and saturation back into it. In Color Finale Pro, I can just click Assume Log and it automatically will convert this to a Rec. 709 color space. So that's really easy, makes it really quick. Um, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna quickly go through how to manually uh, convert this to a Rec. 709 color space. So I'm just gonna raise my exposure of my highlights, which is in my gain and I'm gonna lower the exposure of my lift, which is my shadows, and then adjust my midtones by pulling down on my midtones here a little bit more. And then I'm gonna bring up my saturation just a tad, just right about there. So if I turn this off and on, now we're converted to a Rec. 709 color space. I could even push up my highlights maybe a little bit more, maybe right about there works. You wanna make sure you don't go above 100 IRE on the Luma waveform because your shot won't be broadcast safe at that point. Not only will it not be broadcast safe, but you're also losing detail once you go past 100. Going below zero isn't as bad as going above 100, but you are losing detail if you go below zero. You're crushing your blacks and taking out the detail in your shot. And if you don't know what the Luma waveform does, I created a really in-depth tutorial on scopes. So I will link that below if you guys are curious to learn all about scopes. So we're gonna name this log to rec 7 709. And the next thing we're going to do in the color grading process is color correct our shot. And all that means is we're going to make our shot more natural to what our eyes would see if we're actually there. That makes it easier to match different shots later and it makes it easier to stylize. So I'm going to bring up my RGB overlay to help me with that. I'll also pull up my uh, RGB parade too. Okay, so if I look at my RGB overlay, this is this bright part that's raising above about 75 IRE, and it's showing a little red that's peeking through. And how I like to color correct my shot is just opening a curves and just making small, tiny adjustments to these curves. So I'm gonna go to my uh, highlights, which is the very top of this red curve, and I'm just gonna pull down on the very top. Now you'll notice that starts to introduce some green, and so how I can uh, manage that is just going to the green curve, just pulling down a little bit on the green curve, right about there. So if I turn this off and on and you look right in here, you'll just notice that what we did was that red pulls closer to the other colors. And that's not always what it should do, but in this instance, we have sunlight that's coming through and that's showing on our skin. And so we shouldn't have too much of that red that's, uh, that's popping out. As an example, I'm just gonna kind of swing this middle of the red curve and if you look on the RGB overlay you'll see how you can kind of line them up you see how it passes that green and blue so you kind of want to just get it on the line for something that 
um, that, that should be a neutral color for the most part. And so right about there, our colors are balanced. Okay, I'm gonna switch back to my Luma waveform, which measures brightness, and then go back to my vector scope, which will tell me if my skin is accurate, as well as if I have uh, too many colors that are uh, overly saturated. So I'm gonna rename this color correction, and the next thing we'll do is we'll start with our look. So in Color Finale Pro, it allows you to make groups and mask. And what you wanna do for this instance, because we wanna mask out her skin and then also have the background keyed as well. Uh, the background is gonna be the teal and then her skin is gonna be that orange. So what you do is you press this group button and I'm gonna rename this just so we know what it is. I'm gonna name this look and uh, then you'll add two color wheels here and that'll add two color wheels inside that group just so we know what we're doing i'm going to rename this uh, outside mask and i'm going to name this top one the inside mask skin this will be the skin adjustment and this is important once you do this you'll need to invert one of these so i'm going to invert this outside mask and that's just going to make it so when i adjust the skin, this outside mask isn't affected. I can adjust the outside individually or separated from that inside. So you're gonna go to the group. I'm gonna press the mask button, press this again, and I'm gonna make a mask adjustment to the whole group. Quick note, these masking options and even the grouping options are only available in Color Finale Pro. So if you just have Color Finale 2, I highly suggest you pick up the, the Pro version because in my opinion, it's not even worth it to just have Color Finale 2. These pro features really make the whole plugin worth it. Today we're going to be using the HSL mask and this is something that you can find in Final Cut Pro but you can't find this blur feature right here and this makes the plugin worth it in itself and I'll go over why this is so important in a second. So I'm going to select her skin by using the color picker just selecting her skin and then I'm going to change this display to composite mask so I can see what I'm doing. So usually I'll start with hue and I will adjust it till I can get the most of her skin as possible without getting the outside. And I usually don't want to include the hair too. The hair generally will, will lie in the, in the shadows of the outside. And so I tr want to try and not select that as much as possible. Same with her eyebrows. I don't want to select her eyebrows either. That'll make her eyebrows a little bit orange if we do push towards the orange. And then once I have that selected, I'm going to move to saturation. So going to the saturation and I'm just going to push a little bit, but you'll notice we're already starting to include some of the outside and we want to create the outside as teal. So I'm actually not going to adjust this as much. Instead, I'm going to go to my Luma values and see what I can select, how much I can select just by selecting my Luma values here. And these outside triangles, these bottom triangles, adjust the feathering. So I think that's the best that I'm going to get, unfortunately, and that's not great. And I'll show you how we can combat this in a second. So let me show you why this plugin is worth the money. So if I click off here and I go to my outside mask and I really just crank the, the teal into the shot, which um, this is all of this so far is something that you can do in Final Cut Pro. Let me just show you what we got going on here. If I zoom in, maybe you can already tell, we have a lot of, let me zoom in a little bit more. Our colors are breaking here. You can see right in here, some pixels are falling apart. This is selecting, is being selected as the outside mask, and then her skin is being selected as the inside mask. This frame actually isn't that bad. It's way nor, more noticeable if I go right in here. You'll just see all these spots that are showing up. And unfortunately, this is something that, that happens in Final Cut Pro's HSL masks when trying to push colors. Look at that, that's horrendous. And so here is why this plugin is so awesome. If I go back into the look, click back on my HSL mask, watch this real quick. Let me go up to a place that you can see. And let me just add a little bit of blur, maybe like 3%. Boom, gone. Let me go back to the spot that was really noticeable. Look at that. It basically just blends those colors together. It just adds a little bit of a blur. And you can see what it's doing if I go to my composite mask. You'll see it just blurs the mask. So if I back off this and take out that blur, you'll see what I mean. There are those pixels that are showing up. Add a couple percent blur. 4%, that even may be too much, maybe a 3% blur, and it just smooths those pixels over. It just makes your shot more professional looking. So let me back off here, go back to fit. 
Let's go to the outside mask here and I'll start to adjust a little bit more. So I'm going to push this in not the direction of, uh, of, of cyan entirely. We're going to kind of go a little bit darker blue. You know what? I may go teal for the midtones, which is your gamma wheel. And then I may go blue for my shadows here, just a little bit darker blue. So here's the selection we have, which is pretty good so far. And for some reason, when you're scrubbing through your footage with Color Finale Pro, the blur is taken off until you stop and then it blurs the shot. Okay, and something I'm going to do, if you look right in here on her skin, it is a little bit too blue. And what I'm going to do is just go to my highlights and lower the saturation of this outside mask. That's just going to take out some of that teal from the highlights, but keep it in the midtones and the shadows. And also we're going to be adjusting the highlights and shadows later to clean them up. But for now, that's just a minor tweak that I'm going to do. Next, I'm going to go to my inside mask and uh, we're going to check to make sure her skin is accurate. Now, something a friend brought up recently is that your skin doesn't always have to line up on the skin tone line. A lot of times in film, it will lie outside of the skin tone line and that ends up being just fine. Like, for example, the Ozarks, if you guys know that TV show, skin color in the Ozarks is way off. It's super green, very gross, but people kind of let it slide because it's film. But if you're doing commercial work like this is, or weddings, or vlogs, or um, uh, something like YouTube, generally you want your skin to be accurate. So let me change this to 133%, just so that little tiny thing is a little bit larger. And so I'm gonna go into my gamma wheel, which is my mid-tones. And if you guys remember, your skin tones lie in the midtones. So I'll go to my color wheel. This will adjust the hue of it and I'll just swing it a little bit until it lines up on the line. And honestly, I really don't need to make that much of, a, of an adjustment. I think that's fine. So let's back off image analysis so we can see what we're doing. And that's fine. I may actually raise the saturation of the midtones here. You'll see that'll just pump it up. Another thing I could do is use my six vectors. And uh, actually, let me show you. let me show you that real quick. So let me reset my saturation here. So we're done with the look. So here's what we did so far. We went log to rec 709. Then we did a little bit of a color correction here. Not much was needed, just a tad. And then we added our teal and orange look. So let me bring up the six vector layer and we'll start to make some minor adjustments here. This is the same as hue versus hue, hue versus sat, and hue versus luma in Fonica Pro's native color grading tools. Um, and so this will allow us to dial in our colors a little bit more, but it only gives us um, six options here. If you wanna make an adjustment to more colors or a broad range, you need to use the HSL curves. So I can make adjustment to this teal just by adjusting the hue here, but I'm actually gonna leave that as is, and I may just desaturate this a tad. Next thing I'm gonna do is lower the luminosity, and this will just help to add a little bit more contrast from her. You'll see that uh, it makes the background a little bit darker and then I'm actually may bump this up one more time swing this a little bit towards teal so if I turn this off and on it just helps her pop out just a little bit more maybe I'll swing this a little bit more towards teal and if we go into the red vector the nice thing about this is it will select the skin most of the time so I can change the hue of the skin just by swinging this I can also change the saturation here um, let me reset that. So I'm going to just adjust the saturation a tad and then bump up the brightness of her skin just a little bit. So if I turn that off and on, you'll notice it just gives me a little bit of a pop. Not too much, but just a little bit. And let's just rename this, uh, we'll name this look adjustment. La name. I don't even know what language that was. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is continue on with these secondary corrections. I'm going to add a bit more contrast here. So I'm going to go to my Luma curve and I'm going to pull down on my very darkest shadows. Um, and that's at the very bottom of the curve here. If you look at this color curve, you have the dark that's at this very uh, corner. That's at the very bottom. And then the farther you go, the brighter it is. So highlights, midtones, and shadows. So I lower the darkest points. I'm gonna go towards the midtones and just push up here and help that pop. So if I turn that off and on, we just have a little bit more contrast, a little bit more pop in our subject. I may even raise that even more. Okay, that looks fine. Something I'm noticing, I don't think that we are crushing our blacks, but just to double check, let me bring up my range check. And this is a feature in Fonica Pro that allows you to check if your highlights are blown, if your shadows are crushed, or if you're overly saturated in your brightest and darkest values. So I'm just gonna turn it all on and it's showing that I'm fine here. This isn't crushing, but I may just fade this up. Adjust this a little bit more. 
Okay, that's fine. Okay, that's really weird. So when I turn on my range check, for some reason, this pixelates. For some reason, it doesn't look as good. The blur doesn't show up. Yet when I turn it off, then it blurs. That's really odd. Wow, that's something to, to email Fonica Pro about. Very interesting. You know what I may do? I may go back into my log rec 709 and just bring up my... Uh, shadows just a little bit. I want this to be a little bit brighter than it is and that just brought it up a tad. The next thing I'm going to do is go to my HSL curves and I'm going to take out the saturation in some of the darkest and brightest points of my image. That's just going to help clean up my shot and make it look a little bit more professional. So in Color Finale Pro, you can go to this very dark circle, click this. This will make a selection point of the darkest areas in your shot. I'm going to add another point. Whoops, that was weird. By pressing Command and right clicking. And I'm going to anchor this point here, make these smooth by selecting them, and then just dr bring this down. And this is going to lower the saturation or drop the saturation in the darkest parts of my image. You know what I may do actually is add one more anchor point here. That's odd that it did that. And I will make this smooth and, cur and anchor this there because I want this to be a little bit more gradual. I'm also gonna do the same thing for my highlights. So I'll click this very bright point here, which will make a selection in the very brightest parts of my image. Let me go to this frame that uh, has a lot of highlights involved. And I'm just gonna bring this down. I'm gonna drop this, make sure this is anchored to the line so it doesn't move. And we'll just bring down the saturation in the very bright parts of my image. I may bring this in a little bit more. I don't want this to be too desaturated in her skin, maybe right about there. So if I turn this off and on and you look, especially in her hair and then right here in the shirt, you'll just notice that takes out some of the saturation in those values, even right in here, and just helps clean it up a little bit more. And I can actually group these together, right click, click group, and I'll rename these secondary secondary corrections. Something I just noticed, if we look in the top right hand corner, we have this, um, I don't know what this is, something that's in the room. The nice thing about this plugin is we can exclude that from the mask. It's being selected as her skin here. So if I go back into the mask selection and I add an ellipse mask, I can just bring this over the top of it. We'll adjust the ellipse and then I'm gonna click subtract here. I'll feather it, and then I'm also gonna change the opacity just because that's way too blue here. So let me change, lower the opacity a little bit, and I may find a point where it's fully in the frame, and then just track backwards. So let me go right here and just track this and I may need to speed this up for time's sake. I don't want you guys to be waiting while this tracks. If it goes out of the frame, then you can just go to the point that it moves back in the frame and then track. So let's do that. Okay, so now that is tracked. Now that is excluded from the mask, which is a really cool feature. Final adjustment, I'm gonna go back into Log Rec 709 and I'm going to adjust my uh, shadows a little bit by bringing up my shadows. And then I'm gonna lower my highlights a tad. I just wasn't super happy with that. So that is the look. So let me show you what we did. We converted our log footage to Rec. 709. We color corrected our shot, and then we started to add our look. So we created a mask for her skin and for the uh, outside and brought some teal into the outside, a little bit of orange into the skin mask. And then we started with our secondary corrections. So we went into the teal and we lowered the saturation and raised the brightness a little bit. And then we did the opposite with our red vector, which selects the skin. We added a little bit more contrast by jumping into our curves. And then the last thing we did was we took out the saturation in the very darkest parts of our image, as well as the very brightest parts. And that is our look, guys. I hope you enjoyed it today. If you did, press the thumbs up button. Make sure to subscribe if you have not already. And I will see you in the next video.